Hello everyone, welcome to the Ask Dr. Lin Show where I answer questions that hit Wikipedia.com daily. The best part about my job is that I get to meet commercial bakers from all over the world and eat their baked goods. Hi, I'm Dr. Lin from Bakerpedia, the world's largest resource for technical baking information and the only place you should go first when you need all your technical questions answered on the go. Have a burning baking question? Well, Bakerpedia it. Still haven't solved all your questions? Place any comments on the topics that you are researching on Bakerpedia and I'll do my best to answer them on this show. All wheat flours have a certain level of damaged starch. It is the portion of the starch in the kernel that is physically broken or fragmented during wheat milling. During roller milling, the whole wheat kernel is broken down into smaller pieces. This process of particle reduction is obtained in stages over a few roller mills. As the larger wheat particles are ground into finer flour particles, there are accidental fracture and breaking of starch particles. At these fissures or broken starch granules, the main starch components, amylose and amylopectin, escapes. Because these two macromolecules are water-loving, they bind immediately to the water that's in your dough, increasing the tightness of the dough. This is not the negative impact of damaged starch. The real negative impact is when your operator feels the dough, determines it's too dry and starts dumping in more water to get the feel that they desire for machinability. By adding this much water, especially where it doesn't go to gluten hydration, they dilute the gluten network and therefore creates excessive stickiness at dough divider and the rounder. In addition, since the gluten network is diluted, you will have volume issues and a gummier final crumb that makes it stick to the blades, the slicer blades, and oh, you might even need to bake out your bread even more because this much water causes insulation in your dough and it might take you longer to reach your arrival temperature. What is arrival temperature? Check out this page on thermal profiling and you can see what arrival temperature means. Basically, you need to bake at 80% arrival for a high damage starch content. Anything above 80%, like a 90 or a 95% arrival, is not going to drive enough water out of your bread. And this will create slicing problems with bread with high damage starch content. In a perfect world with gentle milling process, of course. That's if you want to pay 10 times the price of the flour you're paying right now. So no, there is currently no such thing as damaged starch-free flour, mainly because it's a byproduct of the milling process, where we know the millers haven't really changed the milling process in decades. Anyway, expect anywhere between 1 to 4% of damaged starch in soft wheat flour, which is your cake and cookie flour, and anywhere between 6 to 12% in hard wheat flour, like in your bread and bagel flour. Why is it so high in hard wheat flour? Well, because the wheat kernel is more vitreous or hard and it tends to make it more brittle and thus would fracture in more places. As mentioned previously, the amylose and the amylopectin creeps out of the broken starch granules and starts competing immediately for water. Damaged starch absorbs up to three times more water than undamaged starch. Traditionally, when the thirstiest of the macromolecules, which is gluten, grabs most of the water for its hydration, now has to compete with the amylose and amylopectin. You know, when you're the only child in the family and then a baby sibling comes along and grabs all the attention. Well, it's something like that. 
competition. This is how damaged starch affects water absorption. It's competing with gluten. Though the damage of starch granules during milling is unavoidable, your miller can have some control over the amount of damaged starch by adjusting roll pressure and speed, selecting proper roll differential and having a longer mill flow, controlling roller temperature, selecting weak hardness, tempering the kernels adequately before milling. In summary, while there is little that you can do, your millers can manipulate damaged starch content through wheat choice, grain prep, mill setup, and adjustments. Water absorption with some damaged starch can improve baking properties up to a critical level, as mentioned previously. Above this level, the bread will be negatively affected. A higher amount of damaged starch would let the yeast react quicker, so there will be an increase of yeast activity. This, in return, releases more simple sugar, which reacts in the crust to give a reddish hue. If damaged starch is high, you will get a stickier dough, which will be lacking in volume, with a stickier crumb, and problems at the slicer slicing. It will take longer to bake, resulting in smaller bread volume and your bread may become too reddish. In cracker and drier dough formulations, water absorption is pretty low and there is no need for volume. So the effect on damaged starch is smaller, therefore adjust as you need on the roller gaps because you might need to deal with a stickier dough. Believe it or not, damaged starch could actually be beneficial in batter systems when there is a high amount of water. It's very similar to using pre-gelatinized starch. So you'll get better dough rheology, better structure and volume, but don't go crazy by adding damaged starch purposely because too much water is going to affect the volume eventually. And in the yeasted donuts, the problems with, with yeasted donuts will be similar to the problems you'll experience in bread. Damaged starch is often an essential element of bread flour specifications. Some methods for measuring damaged starch include the AACCI official method 76-31.01, which uses a spectrophotometric assay. You can also use the Chopin SD Matic test. And Lastly, you can use an NIR, which is near infrared, which is also an indirect method um, for measuring me uh, damaged starch. Damaged starch does affect falling number, but not enough to significantly alter the number outside the range of variation of the test. What does this mean? Well, where it becomes an issue is when the grain has sprouted um, and damaged starch is more susceptible to enzymatic attack. That means the falling number slurry becomes less viscous when heated and you'll get a lower falling number value. Again, it is rarely enough to move the falling number value to a place where it's of concern. So don't worry about it. Well, that's all I have for today. Okay, we just launched this new consulting team to take care of your technical issues. Go to the link below and check out our very well qualified team of commercial baking consultants. And before you go, please like, subscribe and share this channel. Till the next time bakers, think it can be an ingredient issue? Check out Bakerpedia first!